Hey, I'm Brad Nelson. I'm Brian Brown doing. And you're watching the Versus series on StarCityGames.com. All right, so today we're going to be playing uh, one of my favorite matchups in the format. Uh, much like last week where Todd and I played uh, Bant Megamorph, Green White Megamorph, I guess it's just Bant Megamorph. But uh, yeah. we played that versus Jeskai. And the match was just awesome. So if uh, after this video, if you haven't seen it yet, go back to last week's uh, Friday versus video, and it's just an awesome matchup. And it's the same with this one. Obzon versus uh, Bat Megamorph is just one of my favorite matchups to play. It's really all the decisions are really complex and high pressure. And if you make a small mistake on either side, it's really tough to come back from. To be fair, it's much easier to come back from the Siege Rhino side. Yeah, you can of, play a Siege Rhino and yep. then catch up. Yeah. Yep. And uh, but it's just one of my favorite matchups. So. This does feel a little, uh, a little like it's close to home with like Tom and Todd, where they always played Bant uh, Hexproof. Yeah. And the whole world said not to. And they're just like, I'm going to keep casting these spells. And even we said not to. And like, now we're kind of like that, but with a different deck. Yeah. A lot of the world's not really picking it up, playing with it. Yeah. Nobody's on Green White Megamorph. I've not played a mirror match in like 20 some matches in like. Constructed tournaments plus never on Magic Online. I have never played uh, a mirror match outside of our testing for the Pro Tour. Yeah, and uh, but I mean there, there there has to be things to be said about it. Like uh, two weeks ago, I ended up uh, taking thirteenth mm -hmm. at uh, the Grand Prix with Valentin Mackel playing the same list as me, except he like changed a couple things last minute, and he ended up top eighteen. And and you've had like pretty stellar results at a lot of Grand Prix, like locking up that eleven four, yeah, eleven lock, four life, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like the the deck has a lot of uh, room to grow, a lot of cool angles, and I think it's one of the best decks in the format. So I'm gonna keep uh, sporting it in these videos until people catch on or people call me crazy. Uh, which once that happens, I'll just do the Tom life and just keep playing it no matter what. Anyway, what if instead of people call you crazy, they call you maybe? Anyway, so uh, how this matchup plays out is it's hyper-aggressive. Uh, both sides have a lot of removal. Both sides have a lot of pressure. Yep. Uh, a lot of decisions are really complex. So how most versus videos go where we like develop the game plans in the late game, we just play our spells, get to a mid-game, and that's when the game really starts going. It comes down to the first five turns. Like Those first five turns are super important and positioning. So... Uh, today we're going to be like really talking in depth about those decisions and why we're making them uh, when we do have decisions, just because like the game kind of runs away one way or another around turn five, and those turns take so long when you play them in tournaments. Yeah, there's gonna be a lot of times where I like you know draw my card for a turn and play my third land, and I'm just like you know I got a lot of decisions here. I'm gonna play Anaphens of the Foremost because it's a four power creature for three mana that's bigger than all of his guys and, he, and has a relevant ability. Yes, he <laughs> understands what I'm saying, but only wants to troll. So today's going to be fun. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, it really we got, is. We got a unique BBD today. Or just the same one always. Yep. All right, anyway, I hope you guys enjoy it, and we will talk about the match afterwards and about uh, what these decks want to be doing in this matchup uh, when you play this deck in the next following couple tournaments. Let's do it. Let's do it to it. All right, so you want to do some sevens game action? I mean, I think Abzan's a deck that's better on the play, but yeah, sure, why not, okay, Brad? Yeah. I'll start on the draw. <laughs> oh, uh, mine was close. Mine was close. <gasps> no! <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll take the play. Uh, that's not good for me. Come on, deck. Come on, deck. I'm good over here. I'm sure you are. I'm sure you are. I'm going to keep this hand. I wouldn't say that I'm good, but I'll keep it. Uh, yeah, my hand's missing one small thing, just a force for the Swarden, but outside of that, it's there's not much more I could ask for in this matchup. My hand is also missing one thing, and it's a very similar thing to be missing. Um, but but I'm you gonna... have a forest. Yeah, that's that's all I have. <laughs> <laughs> that's Come all on. I have is a, is a forest. All right. In fact, this is a this is a one lander. A one lander. Yep. I feel like I'm just gonna get Chambly Mints next turn. Go. Is that what you think? I'm just gonna shortcut. Go to 19. Uh, I'll attack you for one. Yep. <laughs> I'll play another warden. Oh, okay. I'll say go. And then play your land. Play it. Chambly Mints. <laughs> <Shambly Yeah. Mint. laughs> 
go. <laughs> All right, untap, draw. Awkward. First tree is the best tree. That was a very awkward draw. I like having two unleveled wardens because I can attack with both, and it doesn't matter which one you block. That is true. Especially when that's my second play. Go. <laughs> I don't even have to level. That's that's just pure value. Um, wonder, let's see. What am I supposed to do here? I think I just attack with both of my wardens. I think I have to take the damage. You're going to be taking two points of damage. You're at 16. I'm going to hang it up and play Tapped Canopy Vista. All right. You're up. Draw. So that was that was a good draw step. It's a, uh, it's a tilt. It was a very necessary draw step. So we'll go Knight. And then grab a Plains. That's going to happen again. <laughs> um, and I think that's all we do for the turn. Next next turn we'll uh, probably be leveling and blocking and uh, hopefully no Gideon comes down. Go. That was a good draw. This is the land we needed so that Gideon can come down? Yep. And uh, going to 15. Let's make a knight ally. And I'll be leveling, and this is how we indicate that. That's yep. A, a, a level one warden. All yep. my creatures are level zero. And you have two cards in hand? Yep. And they're both gas. That's not good. They're just straight gasoline. <clears throat> this is not an enjoyable turn. <laughs> um, I guess we're going to want to be getting at that Gideon, but how? But how do we do that? It's a question that doesn't have an answer. It doesn't. This That's is... why Gideon's so good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hmm. Ah, I dropped a card. Judge. <laughs> yeah. My opponent just dropped a forest and picked up a Dromokus command. <laughs> <laughs> that would help. All right. So let's just. Yeah, we have to. We have to interact with this board. So both had Gideon. All right. Well, I don't really want to. Um throw away my hanger back yet, I don't think. So... But I also don't want my Gideon to die. So I'm going to put, like, the Knight, and I think the Warden here. <clears throat> yeah. We're going we're gonna to make this block here. Okay. It goes to two. I'm not going to have time to... Um, <clears throat> mess around with that. To level both of my wardens up a bunch, so yeah. <clears throat> so here, I feel like uh, we're gonna have to go for this this play. Go grab another another vista. Play a morph. I'm gonna be using the sweet RK post morph. It could be anything. And I'm at 14 and your turn. I think I know what it is. <laughs> I think it's team or charger. <laughs> what does that give a creature trample? Yeah. You have to reveal a green creature to unmorph it. I think that's why he fetched first, so that he could make me think it was a... A den protector? Yeah. Alrighty. Let's see. I think I just lost my Gideon and bash. Mm, that's bad. Nine. Yep, that is bad. If by bad you mean me going to 18 and then casting a wingmate, wingmate rock. rock. I don't know how that fits into your plan, but... It's actually not too bad for me. All right. All right, so we're going to end a turn. Kill the wingmate rock. Okay. Untap. 
Is my Gideon gonna die? Your Gideon is definitely dead. We're going to flip this up. Get back stance, stance the token. Okay. Attack the Gideon. That's pretty good. And play another Warden. And pass the turn. Uh, yep, that uh, I did not play around Valor Stance because it's usually not a very prevalent card, but in this situation it did pretty much destroy us. However, that was a delightful draw. Um, let's see, you're at nine. I'm going to attack you with Warden of the First Tree. I feel like we have to double block here just for the fact that uh, Warden could like level level and then become an issue. And also that we're hoping that we we have to eliminate resources in this game. We're low on, we're lower on life. We have to be be higher on resources and we do have extra cards and we're just hoping that there's not a lot of follow ups, but we can't really play for positioning anymore. Okay. So that's the block. All right. Uh, well, we are going to savage you here. So yep. uh, I'm going to level it up. Yep. I'm going to level this up. Yep. I'm going to play Dromokos Command, put a plus one on this, and this fights this. Okay, sure. And I get two Thopters. And uh, you're up. All right, those Thopters are going to be slightly annoying. Some would say game winning. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who those people are, but. All right, you have one card in hand? I do. All right, just so we don't get blown out by another Dramoka's command, we're just going to Stasis Snare the Warden. That's a tilt. And then your turn. Is that a tilt? It is. <laughs> I had plans for that Warden. Draw. Well, that was. Easily the best card you could have drawn. The worst card I could have drawn. Seven. All right, we'll put you down to seven and <clears throat> another green white land. Yeah. Plans. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm just gonna murderous cut that. Go. Sure. I just don't want to deal, deal with, with it. it. Him flipping it and beating me that way. All right, you have no resources. Correct. All right, flip up, put Warden in play, go for the last ditch. <laughs> okay. I think that's the best play because these creatures are just going to dirtle around while these attack us. And we, we have an opening to level, level, level in the next two turns. So if BBD bricks next turn, we're in good shape. Whoo! Darn it. <laughs> Didn't brick. Attack you for Five. two. You shit. Five. I'll play a face down creature. Don't know uh, what that is. You're up. <laughs> Whatever could it be? Uh, I think I know. What do you think it is? I'm 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 feeling feeling den protector. Okay. And I'm feeling like I might be dead to that den protector on board. Would have flipped your Nissa. Tech. No blocks. Double pump. Because if I don't do if I do anything else, he wins the game on the spot. Okay. I will go to sixteen and you go to eight. Go. Pretty sure you're still dead. I'm gonna flip this up, get back Gideon, Ally yep. Zendikar, make <laughs> yeah. an emblem, and you're dead. <laughs> yep, I knew. <laughs> like I had no other option. I knew you knew. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we're both on six. I don't think either of our hands are good. No. Uh, I will scry and keep it, though. That's a good one on See, top. See, I'm going to scry, and it's the best card in standard, which I'll promptly put on the bottom of my deck. <laughs> Go. We did not get there. Go. All right, so this is a really weird turn because <clears throat> this is actually the turn that BBD and I have talked about the most is that I can't explain to you why you always put Den Protector into play. And sometimes it doesn't work out, but it's almost always correct. Yeah. And so, like, I don't have a play. I could really try to play it and flip it up again because I'm, like, low resource. I don't want to waste resources. But it just always comes out that you just want to get that thing into play. So, your turn. Yep, that's pretty much accurate. At some point in time, it's going to, like, 
slow your hand down or yep now this is really awkward here i'm gonna think i think i have to fetch and just get a planes here which not what i want to do but i have to like add to the board here so i'm just gonna play a hanger for one all right i'm gonna get a green white attack and play a death disruptor sure All right, so 17 to 19. All right, so I'm going to need I'm gonna a, need to draw... A Knight of the White Orchid? Yeah. Would that help? Yeah, oh, yeah, it would. <laughs> All right. Ooh, that was a great draw. Oh, no. Basic land planes. All right. <laughs> you didn't have a green source in your hand? No. You can't put the hanger into play. You got to get green out of your deck. Do I? I think so. Go. I also don't have that many green cards in my hand, so. That's an interesting draw. And I can use this Den Protector to get this Flood Strand back. If you find it one If green. I draw another green yeah. source. <laughs> All right, let's stay aggressive. Taking okay. it. 12. All right, Gideon, make an ally. Tilt. Your turn. All right, come on, deck. Green for Jamoka's command, blow me out. Ooh. Just what the doctor didn't order. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Thing is, like, even if I got a green source, it like wouldn't really have done anything. Sure. Like all my cards are black and white, except for these two cards I could have cast if I had a green source. All right. Uh... Tech. All right. We are going to block the knight token. Yep. Attempt to level my hanger. I'll respond with a counter fight. You're countering Counter this. On this and putting and having these two fight. Sure. And now that that protects because I don't want to use this to fight because then you can just save damage. All and right, so I trade. Go to, I go to six. You go to six, correct? Okay. And then I'm going to make another. Knight and a hanger back. I think this is pr pretty easy game for me here at this stage. Yeah, I feel like this is just elementary magic. Just <laughs> my morph was a forest. Oh, was it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, I'm going to be on the draw, and if I ever go back on the play, the sideboarding gets uh, much more complex. So we'll just go over that again uh, when that happens. Sure. And and but so for on the draw. Cards like Hangerback, Nissa, and Dramokas Command are all just extremely weak in the matchup. So <clears throat> instead of trying to play some of these cards on the play, uh, I'm just going to, or playing them on the draw, I'm just going to save them for when we're back on the play and not be on counter spells. But so we're going to be bringing in the fourth knight, two stance, three Dramokas Commands, and some more removal. And we're going to be playing a much more contained game of magic, trying to make sure that we have enough removal spells and interactive spells to uh, <clears throat> keep. BBD's gigantic monsters off the board, as well as disable strokes to help out in the Gideon fights and the wingmate fights. Okay, for me, um, so while Command is like one of the worst cards for him, it's one of my best cards because my creatures are all bigger than his. Uh, so it's just an easy fight and and blowout. So I want to cut Hangerback Walkers because it makes my commands worse when he has a bunch of silk wraps and stasis snares. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then I'm cutting one Den Protector because I feel like it's like maybe a little bit too slow in this matchup, at least from my side of the board. And then I'm bringing in Silk Wraps to deal with his hangers uh, and things of that nature. And then a singular Wingmate Rock because it's probably, like, the best card against him. Mm -hmm. At least on the play. Oh, yeah. On the draw, I might just go back to two. But... All right. Uh, so I'm on six cards here. And this six is not super exciting, but I think it's, like, a keep anyway. So uh, I'm going to keep it and scry and definitely scrying that to the bottom. All right. Go ahead. The Lanowar Wastes. Go. Play Sunken Hollow. Go. All right. So here, uh, the only way to make sure that we are live for potentially using counter magic is by playing this right now. So we're going to do that and play Warden and pass the turn. Go. And... I'll just play this and say go. All right. Fetch down to 19, find our prairie stream. We're kind of, uh, you know, telegraphing our, our cards, but in matchups where the most powerful cards 
are difficult to play around cards like Disdainful Stroke. Like, it doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. All right, and then draw. All right, so this is kind of a difficult turn. No, uh, it just feels like we should attack. Okay, take uh, it. Yeah, just one. 19 all. Yep. Uh, I'm going to fetch a force, go to 18, and play a Death Disruptor. Okay. And then your turn. Ultimate Price would kind of blow us out there, but it's not the biggest deal if uh, if he had Gideon. We have answers to both if they resolve. <clears throat> All right, pretty much just making Price. the only play that I can really make. It's probably not going to work, but we're going to do it. Go. All right. uh, untap, play a planes, and silk wrap it. Okay. And then just deal four to Gideon and pass the turn. Okay. Draw. We'll play Wooded Foothills. And I'll pass the turn. All right, uh... This will probably get Obzon Charmed. Uh, there's a higher chance of that, so we'll just level. I've once danced around Obzon Charm with Wardens. I'm just going to do it while you're tapped out. I'm just going to... Uh, well, I'll fetch first uh, 18. Yeah, because this deck list does sometimes play Dispels or in random things. Yep. All right, untap. All right, so we'll attack for three. Yep. Put you at 15. Four, yeah, 15. Yep. And we have a lot of decisions on our side. Uh, so let's, like, try to actually, like, figure out his hand. It's always important in these matchups to try to figure out your opponent's hand. Um, Obs on Charm was cast. I don't think it, it could be a Rhino, but I don't think so. It could be a Dem Protector, but it's better to get, like, the Death Mist gone and then morph up. It could be a Stranded Wingmate Rock. Um and so we want to try to navigate through the best possible course of action. And I think that would involve just fetching to 17 and playing a morph. Okay. And it's not playing our best card in our hand, but I don't think we have to. So your turn. Draw. I'm just trying to protect myself from, because if he plays a Gideon, I might have trouble actually getting at that Gideon. I guess not. Just animate my Gideon attack, but... You can animate your Gideon and attack. Alright, I am going to uh, play Gideon. I guess it's just it's a safe kill. Yep. I might get cut, but... Yeah, I'm gonna cut that. Yep. Two cards in hand? Yep. All right. Play a land, tech for three, play Gideon, make a make a knight. Yep. I could have tried to double level, but we still have resources, so it's better to just use them. All right. And tap and draw. I'll fetch to 11. Okay. And get a uh, canopy vista. I'm going to activate Shambling Vent. Yep. And let's see. I'm going to try to put a counter and fight your knight token. That resolves. Good. I gain three, then attack Gideon. I'm going to stance it. Okay. So I'm at 14. Basically, my hand was really, my opening hand was really awkward, and we never drew a creature. To play the, uh, the entire screen. game, so I'm pretty much forced into making these lines of play that aren't good, but it's but all you like, have to make them. Yep. All right, so you're at 11. Yep. 
No, I'm at 14. I gained 3. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, 8. Okay. And then play Death Mist. 6. Yeah, I think it's better to play the Death Mist. Right, I'm dead. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm gonna keep this hand. It's a little risky, but it has high payoff if it pays off. So I'm gonna I'm gonna keep it. I feel like that's exactly what my hand is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh what I got in there! <laughs> I should have kept. I was even gonna troll keep. <laughs> I should have. That would have been great. All right, well, I don't think we can mulligan down to five, but we'll keep this. It's a little weak. We'll put that on the bottom. All right, I'm going to play Windswept Heath and say go, and I just want to point out that Windswept Heath really sucks in this deck a lot. <laughs> I keep drawing, like, a million Windswept as my fetches, and it keeps preventing me from doing things. Oh, no. Boys. Okay, good. I didn't... Back in the deck. You always got to look at the top card to see if you, you know, screwed yourself by fetching. So. Did you? Yeah. Uh, no, I didn't. So. Okay. Now I have a chance at glory. Oh, yeah. I, I, I don't feel like I'm going to put up a, much of a fight this game. All right. So we're both at 19. I don't think that's necessarily true. Um, go. Ugh. Face up den. Plains den. <laughs> that's like a half get there. Oh, I'll attack for two. Block. Okay. They'll trade. Go. I like fifty percent got there. Oh. Deck, why? Why do you why do you hate me so? Go. Alright, so what is the play here? It's just attack for two with Chamberlain Vents. <laughs> That does seem appealing. appealing yeah, yeah I would just appealing. do that. I think when in doubt, you just fetch and cast a Siege Rhino. That's that's good. So, so. 21 to 15. Yep. Go. I'm going to get a whatever that land. Smoldering Marsh. Mm. Um, not going to block. I'm at 18. Go. I think my rhino is dead. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel like it is surviving. Draw. That's actually a reasonable one. Uh, combat. Okay. Four. Eleven. All right. I guess my rhino did survive. Now it makes me wonder what he has. How many cards do you have over there? Four. I feel like he just has like a fistful of disdainful strokes. I'm gonna play in offensive the foremost. Okay. Let's say go. All right. Ten. Hey, looking for prairie stream. I might just get my prairie stream white bordered. Like, or just some some way to identify it on my deck. Keep it in your pocket. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's what that I do. Great. <laughs> Tech. Getting wingmate rocked. Go to fifteen. Play wingmate rock. Sure. Trigger. What are you triggering? The raid ability. Oh, cool. That's that's cool. Draw. Attack with both my creatures. Um, let's see. I will exile Wingmate Rock. Yep. And trample over for one. So you take five down to five. All right. Go. Attack me and Wingmate Rock. All right, I'm dead. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, I didn't have, I, I, I drew nothing for the for most of the game. I attacked with the Death Mist just because I had to trigger Wingmate. Wingmate and hope you didn't cast yours. Sure. 
Basically, I felt like I was really far ahead, and then there was no reason to play into a disdainful stroke. Oh, yeah, for sure. All right, so now that we're on the play, we're going to be taking out all of our knights, our disdainful strokes, and even our prairie stream, and just bringing in all those cards we said that were too slow on the draw. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to be going much more aggressive. Um, as you can see, like when, when one of the decks floods out, they just lose, but when you're the one from behind trying to play knights, disdainful strokes, you kind of have to you know, walk that... Uh, double-edged sword, and it doesn't matter if you flood a little bit because you have to make sure you hit all your resources and make sure you actually, like, interact because it doesn't take many cards for uh, an obs on deck to win, so you have to make sure that you deal with all of them, and, and smoothly curving out is, is important. Yeah, I only played four cards that game. Like, they're just yeah. so powerful that... Um, for me, I'm bringing in two prices on the draw. I'm cutting a command and a rock. Command's much worse on the draw. And Wingmate Rock is also much worse on the draw, where I feel like I'm going to be trying to catch up. And I still want to, because I want to draw them in situations where they can stabilize the board or pull mm -hmm. me ahead. But I don't want to get stuck with, like, two rocks in my hand. So this is a pretty weak hand. Uh, if we don't draw any lands, we probably lose the game. But I th think it has to be a keep, just because it has some interactive spells, an early creature, and what we want to eventually do in the game. So... This is the kind of hand I'm not happy to keep, but I'm not going to mulligan it. All right. Uh, yeah, we have to we have to fetch here. Okay. So, no, you can go, but I'm just... We have to get a dual land here. Well, I'm going to make the only logical play. So, it's much better to go basic, basic here, um, so that no matter what land we draw for turn three, it comes into play untapped. Mm-hmm or future turns, but if it's a forest, we could get stuck on not being able to cast one of our important removal spells, one that I want to take out of the deck. That's not good. Planes Hanger. Sure. Um, uh, for me, I could play this now, but I'd rather just curve basic basic, and then I can uh, do some stuff later, so we'll just... Uh, pass the turn. Yep, play that and pass. All right, that's bad for us. Uh, attack for one. I'm taking one. The 19. Hanger back. Yep. Go. He's bringing hanger back. What? All right, I'll play an Anafenza. Here we go. <laughs> the deck's most natural enemy. <laughs> There's our land. All right. Stance. S yep. Or Oops, Silk Crab. Silk Crab, sure. Attack for one and level this one. All right, I'm at 18. Your turn. Uh, I feel like this is not going to work out well for us, but here's a Gideon, and I'll make a knight and say go. It's not going to work out poorly. Ugh. All right, uh, attack Gideon for two. Um... Interesting. I'll just not block. Okay, take two. Nissa, forest, go. Okay. I'll tag with Night Ally. <sighs> So what this says to me is that we're getting rocked, but I don't really know what, yeah, I guess I just have to accept my fate. Okay. Um, make a couple thoptas. I'm going to make another knight, and I'm going to say go to my end of combat stuff, fetch. Uh, so you're doing what? I said so you're... And a combat step, and then when I my say what you're going name. to do, you don't do that joke. <laughs> it's like the stupidest. Jo I hate it. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna crack this crappy windswept teeth that I really hate so much, and play a wingmate rock. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Bird is the word, Brad. Bird is the word. I hate that joke. Uh, 
Um, well, we don't have much of an option, so I guess we'll. Um, I guess we'll just. Double Drunk Commands blows us out. I guess we just have to let him have life. Yep. And now that gives us protection from Drunk's Command and just attack the Gideon. Yep. I uh, will. Block these two? Yep, block those two. Okay. Gideon dies. And your turn. Alright, draw. Okay. There's a lot of different things that we could do, a lot of different plays we could make here, but I think our best is just going to be making another knight and not even attacking with a rock. Sure. Just playing defense here, trying to keep this Gideon alive. All right, untap, draw. All right, attack both creatures at Gideon. I guess this is just... This just allows me to not get this eaten and deal some damage to Gideon, but I don't know if that's relevant. Yeah, we'll just attack that at Gideon. Um, I'll just block. Yep, and I'll make two thopters and guess we can my own wingmate. Sure. And your go. All right, this is going to be a fun game. Attack you with Gideon. Oh, uh, another rock. You drew both of your rocks. All right, I'll go to 13. Uh, it's 12, actually. Sure. And I'll do this. And uh, get another one. Get a pink one here. You're up. I think we are in trouble. All right, how can I get out of this? Gideon make an ally. <laughs> I don't really know what I'm supposed to do. Your turn. Okay. Draw. I'll make an emblem with Gideon. Mm -hmm. uh, there's an emblem over here somewhere. And I'm going to attack with these three at your Gideon and gain six life. Uh, 23. So if we we can like try to eat try to eat a wingmate uh, and we'll lose all of these to a removal spell. If he has Jermoke's command, we'll lose these. I just don't think we can afford it, so we'll just lose our Gideon. Okay. I'll play a Warden and a Siege Rhino. All right, 8 to 26. Yep. And that's it for me. All right. I will attack Gideon 
Okay, so you gain one to nine. Nine, and then play a Death Disruptor in your turn. Okay. And this is an interesting turn. I have a lot of options I could I have a lot of decisions I could make here and a lot of it depends on what he has in his hand. Um, I think what I want to do is just I think I actually want to exile your penguin token it's dead and then go to combat and mm -hmm. I'm just going to attack with absolutely everything here and I'm going to gain 12 life if the triggers resolve. No. Upon combat. I, I'd... Before attacks or. Yeah. Do you have. Oh, yeah, that won't matter. Target that before they're all turned sideways. Okay. So then I gain 5, five. life. I got a 31. Yep. All right. I'm pretty sure we're just dead. Uh, this will deal 2. We have to chump both of these, and we still need to draw a removal spell next turn. If we do this, this will deal us four. So this is two, six. Sure, I'll block like this. Uh, we'll yep. level level oh, this. Okay. Um, yeah, level that up. So you're gonna take six. two trample plus. Yeah, you take six. I'm at three. So I have one out. Uh, and I'll play shambling then. Okay, I have no outs. Go. Uh, yep, dead. Yep. Uh, yeah, so that was basically, honestly, a pretty, like, oh, we, we each had awkward draws, but mm -hmm. a fairly accurate representation. Like, a lot of grindy Abzan's cards are a little bigger when they have uh, draws that don't stumble that much. Like, they're probably favored, but uh, one of the issues with Abzan is that it stumbles a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and we keep seeing, like, Abzan win all these tournaments, but having, but it doesn't have, like, a great win percentage in the tournament itself. Like, the Pro Tour was sub-50% win percentage, but won. Uh, and then some of these other GPs as well, where it's like... I mean, I don't know. Like, they're, a lot of people are playing it, but a lot of, like, they're in the top 8s and top 16s and top 32s. Like, yeah. like we saw the last weekend in uh, Indianapolis, there was a lot of OBS on. Yeah. And I, I feel like it's it's clunky, but a lot of other decks become clunky because of how powerful it is. Yeah. Like, you stumble for a turn, the deck takes advantage of it. Yeah. Um. So, I don't know, like, I, I agree that the deck is clunky, and that's where we were at, at initially with the deck and why we gave up on it. But it's clunky, but it also preys on inconsistencies across the board. Yep. And we're seeing it win a lot of tournaments. And when decks win a lot of tournaments, like, it's it's probably just the best deck. Like, like mm, I love green-white, and I'm going to keep playing it. And uh, But it, it's tough to argue with actually how many chips the deck has, you know, obtained over the last month. I mean, that's true, yeah. Yeah, but um, no, I think both these decks are great choices. These are the two Gideon decks in the format, in my in my opinion. Like, yeah, you could play something else with Gideon, but it's going to be a, an inferior version of one of these two decks. Pretty much, yeah. Um, and it's mostly because they both cater to Wingmate Rock along with Gideon, and Gideon's best friend is Wingmate Rock, uh, and they both like really help with that. But um, but yeah, I think they're both really good choices. So if you have an upcoming event and you're interested in either one of these decks, uh, I would go. To either of them, they're both great. Yeah. I, f I feel like the mana base for Abzan can still be improved, though. Like... I feel like it's just that circle, man. It's just like you keep going in circles trying to find find it. Like, there's just... And 
these these mana bases are just inconsistent for how fast these decks have to go. Yeah. And whenever you have formats like that, uh, the tricolor deck is going to have problems. Uh, it, it's just it, like you draw a windswept heath when you already have like a forest and a plains and it just can't get anything. Like it just it's just so awkward. Like a lot of the draws, but I, I agree. But it's the land that lets you turn one warden the most consistently and. Yeah, and or level it on turn two. It just helps with both sides. So, I mean, I'm with you, but I also believe that like the the deck is trying to go so fast that it's too fast for its mana to actually develop uh, correctly, and sometimes that's where the stumbling's coming from. Yep, yep. But um, outside of that, like, I mean, that's why I play green white. I don't get an offenses. I don't get siege rhinos or obs on charms, but I get pretty good mana. Yeah, nearly. I, w I won't say perfect, but very close to perfect mana. Yeah, you, like once or twice a tournament. Like I can. You know, think of the two times that I had bad mana and that cost me games in, in, in Grand Prix and stuff. Yeah, I actually can't think of a single time it's happened to me. Uh, I've, I've had games where I flooded or drew too few lands, mm -hmm. but I actually can't think of, think of a single time where I just had the wrong kind, colors of mana. Yeah, my like, winning in, in in the tournament. I just had <laughs> my opener was Force, Force, Planes, and I drew Stasis Nairs. It's probably a deck building error because the more I play with Stasis Nairs, the less I like it. Yeah, but so, I mean, if you're playing Knight in your deck, like, presumably you have double white anyway. You should. Yeah. I mean, of course, I, I should, but I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> but um. But anyway, that's all we got for today. Join us this weekend where we are going to be in Atlanta playing some Limited. It's a Grand Prix hosted by Star City Games, and our coverage staff is going to be there bringing you 15 rounds of Limited action followed by a top eight that hopefully one of us will be in because we're actually testing for it. How many rounds of Limited will, will, will we be playing this weekend? See, the tournament's uh, 15, but I'd we say, might only be playing like seven. I'd like. say min, <laughs> no, I'd say min eight. Okay, eight, I'm yeah. thinking that I can get two wins. Okay. One win. I only get one win. You only need one win to no, get No, two to, wins to okay. get to, to round eight. Yeah. Okay, yep. Yep, and uh, I feel like I can pull out two with this, any sealed pool. That's, yeah, and then, seems uh, reasonable. Yep, and then max 15. <laughs> <laughs> not even 18 yeah <laughs> max 15 for me but uh but i'm hope i'm hoping i get some good good cards and have some fun it's been a while since i've day two a limited gp i've missed the last two it's very really depressing i keep making day two and then having a middling finish yeah yeah all right but anyway that's it thank you for watching and we will see you this weekend in atlanta see you